Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed what could be the last time I ever have that transition between basketball and hockey ever again. But no matter, we are getting into fantasy football season now. This is the football season, the NFL season is fast approaching, so we are going to be hot and heavy with different segments. But for today, we have two special segments where I'll be discussing first my fantasy running back breakout stars. Now, this is an exciting crop of players that I have assembled for you guys. Guys who are in new systems, uh, are in their sophomore seasons at different teams, or guys who just are willing to break out no matter what. So without further ado, let's jump right into this segment. I'm really thrilled to be able to get into fantasy football talk because I know that's what most of you guys want to hear from here on out. So let's get right into it. Now, Nope, wrong segment. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Now, this list of players that I've assembled for you guys today are some of my favorite running backs in the league, mainly due to this kind of youthfulness and excitement surrounding them, seeing as to how they're all in systems that really fit them well, whether it be guys who are getting a new head coaching change, guys that are on new teams, or guys that are wanting to step up and B, the huge force that their teams need them to be. I really think that this is a great list. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting off with one of the most talked about running backs in the league, mainly due to the fact that his former coach, Arthur Smith, definitely disrespected him as he shows up on my screen, Mr. Bijan Robinson. Now, by no means did he have a terrible season last year. He had 976 rushing yards, and that ranked 15th in the league. 58 receptions for all you PPR heads out there. 8 touchdowns. He averaged 14.5 fantasy points, which ranked 17th amongst all running backs. It's not a terrible overall season for Mr. Robinson. But the big question about him was his usage rate. He just was so underutilized. He ranked 31st in usage rate in this past season. And so, now that the Falcons have switched over to Raheem Morris, and he's come out and said that Bijan Robinson will get his share of touches in this new-look Falcons offense, obviously they bring in Kirk Cousins, they still have Drake London and Kyle Pitts who are wanting to break out. So, it certainly feels like a page is going to be turned in terms of how the Atlanta Falcons offense is going to look. And I'm really excited and intrigued to see how Bijan Robinson will become a part of that. He is one of those top five running backs in leagues. He's definitely not a streamer option. He is going to be a number one option for your fantasy football team next season. So Bijan Robinson starts off this list with a bang. Hopefully Raheem Morris keeps his promise to him. Coming up next on this list is a guy who moves to a team that I really believe can be able to utilize his skills in Zach Moss. Now, Zach Moss has had an interesting career, moved around a lot with the Bills. Now he is going to the Cincinnati Bengals, where they don't necessarily have a set running back. They lose Joe Mixon to the Houston Texans. And so I really feel as if Zach Moss will have a nice little run out here for the Cincinnati Bengals. He's not necessarily competing as much with other players. And last year, he had a career year, career highs in rushing yards, receptions and TDs, and fantasy points at 12.1. So I don't necessarily think he's a top 10 running back, in my opinion. He'll have to reach that height. We'll see how he shares time with Chase Brown and Sam J. P. Ryan. But ultimately, I think that Zach Moss could be a nice little option for you. And so, I'm excited to see what he does in the Cincinnati Bengals offense that is looking to be very potent this season. Coming up next on this list is a guy who had a breakout campaign last year in a new home in the Andre Swift. Obviously, never really got it going with the Lions. Had some decent up and down seasons with them. But he never truly had a breakout campaign for them. And so, moved to the Philadelphia Eagles last year. Obviously, now that Saquon Barkley comes in, we'll see if his touches decrease this season because Saquon definitely is a very intriguing addition to that running back room. But last year in Philly, he had 1,049 rushing yards. 
He had five games with at least 130 plus rushing yards in the last three seasons as well. Very interesting stat for him. And last year, the most important part about his season was he was healthy. He had a couple injury concerns with the Lions in his career, but he proved with the Philadelphia Eagles that when he remains healthy, he is one of the preeminent running backs in this league. Look for him in like the mid second round, early third round range is where I believe that DeAndre Swift could fall. So DeAndre Swift is going to be one of those guys to look out for should you wish to roster a guy who really has his career revitalized moving to Philly. And like I said, we'll have to see what the Saquon deal is and the tush push situation too. But last but not least, in terms of guys who I have the stats on for and are capable of breaking out, Javante Williams. Javante Williams always seems like he should be one of the most prominent running backs in this league. He had some fantastic seasons for the Broncos, even as they failed to find consistency team-wise. But Javante Williams has always been a steady presence in that Denver Broncos offense. Last year, 903 rushing yards. 40 receptions, 7 TDs, as a rookie, actually, in 2021. And then, this past couple of seasons, things kind of fell apart for him. He had to compete with guys like Jaleel McLaughlin. They drafted Audric Estime, who I'm really excited about to see in that Denver Broncos system. And so, Javante Williams seems like the least safest to bet amongst this group of players, where... You know his highs are high, but his lows are certainly lower than what we've seen from guys I've mentioned before. And so, Javante Williams just needs to prove himself. I think he can be a solid RB 10 to 12 to even maybe 15 range if you're confident in taking him. But ultimately, I can't say he's uh, at the levels of guys like DeAndre Swift, Bijan Robinson, or even Zach Moss. But I'm glad to see him on this list because I know he's what he's capable of. And we've seen flashes of what he's capable of. And maybe in a new system where the restrictions surrounding the whole Sean Payton, Russell Wilson situation goes away. And now he has a new quarterback, a rookie quarterback in Bo Nick. So maybe Sean Payton trusts him more. So we'll have to see. But guys who I just wanted to mention, not necessarily stat-wise, but who I believe will have to maintain their levels of production throughout the season, are two guys who are in their sophomore year and rookie season, respectively. And one is actually coming off an injury, the rookie, who I think will really step up. And that those are Ty J. Spears and Jonathan Brooks, respectively. Ty J. Spears is an interesting one to watch because in a Tennessee Titans backfield that just lost Derrick Henry and now has Will Levis manning the QB position, Ty J. Spears, I think his touches will go exponentially upwards should Will Levis struggle to be a high-caliber starter for the Tennessee Titans. Obviously, they have done everything they can to really support Will Levis. They've got him a new coach in Brian Callahan, new weapons in Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins, but I do feel as if they still maintain that run-first philosophy in Tennessee. I don't think losing Derrick Henry necessarily makes forces your hand in terms of what you want to run through your running field. And so I feel as if Ty J. Spears is getting a little underestimated. He's not necessarily ranked as high as some of these other guys on this list, but I do expect him to have a breakout season just based off his situation and where he is. Another guy, like I said, coming off an injury as a rookie, um, who I really believe can really help a struggling team, one of the worst teams in the league, is Jonathan Brooks. When he comes back from his torn ACL he suffered, Late on in his in his career at Texas, he is going to be someone to watch, especially for a Carolina Panthers team that will try and find ways to produce offense in whatever way they can. Fantastic season last year at the University of Texas for Jonathan Brooks. One of the reasons why he was seen as one of the number one running backs in that draft. Over 1,000 yards. Really special player. It's just his contact balance, his ability to create yards after contact. I think that really would bode well for him in a Carolina Panthers team that's really trying to find the weapons on offense. Obviously, Bryce Young needs a running back mate in the backfield to kind of rely upon as he kind of tries to figure out opposing defenses. Obviously, the, the, the receiving core, the less we say about that, the better. So, 
look for Jonathan Brooks to maybe be a steal. Maybe in a super flex league, I'm not sure about a one running back league. But we'll have to see. That will just about do it for this segment of today's show. I hope you liked this fantasy football segment because we are going to get even more into the fantasy football realm in the coming weeks. And especially in the next segment where I'll be giving you guys a little injury update for the fantasy football season for 24 to 25. You don't want to miss it on this edition. The GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast will be right back with that one.